Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Cleo. Today we'll be talking about the part 3 of the SL120 V2. I've done two videos on this SL120 V2 and the SL140 V2. The first video I've done, which is part 1, is talking about the build structure of the fan itself and how to connect to your system and how to make use of the controller using the L Connect 3 application. Part 2 will be more on the uh, ARGB effects and to show you what are the enhancements on the lighting's effects and there are plenty to play with. So if you guys missed those two videos, you can click on my top right hand corner. I'll just leave the URL and you can just view those two videos. Now before I start to talk about the methodology of how I do the uh, thermal test on this uh, system itself, right? I'd like to thank Lenny to have provided me with SL120 and the uh, SL140 V2 but sad to say that I do not have the uh, SL140 to test on a 280 radiator so in this test I'll be using the Galahad 360 with the original SL fans which you see right in front of you then I will conduct a benchmark on my 5950X system so once that's done I will show you the results and then to proceed on to swap out the SL120 V2 with the original fans and conduct a benchmark again and to show you the results. This will derive how good this V2 are or I should say the uh, newly released SL120 V2. Let's get to my dashboard and I'll show you what are the things that I've set before I do the benchmark. The methodology of the test is pretty straightforward but before I explain the whole style this is in fact the room temperature in my room it's not air conditioning in fact it's 31.5 degrees celsius some of you from north america and europe might be wondering wow this is pretty hot yes this is singapore in fact we do not have winter fall or such so throughout the uh, whole year right it's either the coolest at 29 or should i say 28 degrees celsius all the way to 31 to 32 degrees celsius so this is pretty normal to us and take note that this test is conducted without air conditioning on the first 20, 30 minutes right i will be conducting this uh, thermal test on this sl120 original fans which are white which you can see over here is blowing air out i mean through the uh, radiator and not sucking air in so take note on this then once after 30 minutes right i will swap off the fans to the uh, new fans which is the sl120 v2 which is in black and I'll conduct another 30 minutes again. Now, based on the fact that this is my UEFI of this system here, the X5 Semtai Tai Chi, this is a board that I'm using, and the uh, processor I'm using is the 5950X 16 core processor. Things that I've actually done on this UEF, UEFI itself, let me just open up the screen to full. On the OC Twitter, what I've done is to load the XMP profile and the infinity fabric i will set it to 1600 because my rams are running default at 3200 clock speed then on the uh, external voltage settings which is the load line calibration i have set the v core offset to minus 125 with a load line calibration on the v core as level 3 then the soc call will be like i mean the soc voltage will be auto and again taking load line calibration 3. On the advanced itself, where I did the overclocking over here, I have set the PBO2, which is known as the Precision Boost Overdrive. As you can see here, I have set the PPT to 172, TDC to 135, and EDC to 170. I'm hoping to hit the uh, consistent CPU clock speed at 4.3 to 4.4 GHz. And the curve optimizer i did make use of it where i set all my cores to negative 12 except for core 6 as you can see here core 6 is negative 5 and core 8 over here is negative 5 only these two cores are negative 5 reason being right i can't sustain at a good um, stable com on more than i mean more than minus 5 because core 6 and 8, I believe they are taking, consuming more uh, power from the motherboard itself. Besides this, on the uh, hardware monitor, right, as you can see here, now, 
The CPU fan one is running at 19, 12 RPM. This is in fact the uh, fans, the SL fans on my radiator. Then the water pump, as usual, the Galahad AIO pump that's running at this speed. And for SP fan speed, this is in fact the X570 chipset on the motherboard itself. And I've not set anything besides this. Oh, speaking of which, right, um, the uh, fan on the SL120, I've set it to full speed. As you can see over here, CPU 1, or should I say CPU fan 1, I've set it to full speed. Oops. See? Full speed. And same goes to my pump. I set it to full speed. And I expected that this... Uh, SL120, right? In fact, their max speed is actually 1900. Okay, with this said, I'm just going to save this and to reboot the device. Or should I boot, say boot up to uh, Windows? My Windows is booted up. Now, things to take note, I'll be using R23, or should I say Cinebench R23, which is this, to run the test. And to show you the test, I'll be running off this valley. And let me just run this up. See, the tests are all over here. And of course, I will choose a nice, plain, static, not so distracting. So throughout the run, right, when you look at it, you will be like, you know, you can focus on all the figures over here. Speaking about the figures, right, um, take note on the CPU temperature over here and the clock speed as mentioned. I'm trying to target at a clock speed of 4.3 to 4.4 gigahertz. Okay, just wait a moment. Let me just set this properly. Now you'll be looking at this so you can see the uh, stats over here clearly. Now as mentioned, the clock core clock or should I say the CPU speed itself expected to run at 4.3 to 4.4 gigahertz and these are the uh, core usage as a night this is to this and the CPU package which is the power drawn from the PSU so this will load 100 and you will see that this will be drawn and the um, core voltage as mentioned CPU one this is the uh, SL120 the original fans which will run around 1.9 or should I say 1900 rpm to about 1800 or so then for CPU 2 this is actually my AIO the Gala AIO and the SB fans as mentioned this is the X570 chipset now as a consistency be, be it my test on this or the uh, new fans right you'll be able to witness all the PPT and TDC and EDC I've not tempered anything Besides this, I will be launching this to let you see the um, CPU temperature. Oh, speaking of which, let me just run one time just to warm up the uh, CPU. And I'll be showing you a graph over here. Yep, this is it. So this graph will always be here. So throughout the 30 minutes, right, you will see that it will be consistent. As in, I have not cut the uh, frame itself. So to witness that this is actually a fair comparison. Alright, I believe it's going to stop anytime right now. So throughout these 30 minutes, right, I will not let you watch the whole 30 minutes. In fact, I, was, I will fast forward like what I'm doing right now. So to begin with the test, as I mentioned over here, these are the legends that you need to take note on, especially the temperature itself and this will run consistently on the graph itself okay let's go on with the test and i will after this i will switch to the uh, v2 then i'll conduct the same test again and i will explain to you the results of what i find whether the v2 v2 is a performer or not here we go <music> This
This is the second test whereby I swap out all the SL original fans which are white to this SL120 V2. And again, I'll be conducting a 30 minutes test. I will launch Cinebench and also Valley just to show you the stats when it's running. And while it's actually running, let me just choose a good scenario. And on the background itself, I'm running one pass to warm up. I mean, to warm up the um, CPU. So let me just grab a nice stationary sky so that it would not be so distracting. And during the test, do take note on the temperature, the power package, and of course, all the stats like the uh, RPMs of the fans and the power drawn over here. All right, so I'm just going to move this up so we can see this clearly. As mentioned, the CPU temperature, make sure you take note on it, the clock speed, all this that is listed over here, you can take note, and especially the RPM. Now, for this SL120 V2 fans, they are running at a max speed of 2000 RPM, so it's pretty close. I'm just going to run the um, 30 minutes test. Now, before I do so, right, let me just launch the graph of the CPU temperature, which is down here. Then I will run. Here we go. Results are out and it's kind of hard to explain on static um, figures. So I would to do live with you. Now, these two feeds are the live feed that I've recorded and I've taken them on the last 15 minutes. Let me just show you. See, this is the last 15 minutes on the SL120. And I will name the SL120 as the O fans. I will just say O. And for the SL120 V2, I will call it new. See, the last 15 minutes. Having to say so, right, I need you guys to take note and to pay attention on the things that I'm going to say right now, because that will explain everything. Now, placing this side by side, take a look at the uh, temperature on the old fans and the new fans. So if I would to move right within this period period of time, you'll see that the old fans is hovering at 78 degrees Celsius and the new fans are hovering at 77 degrees Celsius. No big deal. One de degree difference, right? You might say. But look at the clock frequency of the CPU itself. I mean the old against the new. See as I move. The old fans hardly touches 4.3 gig in fact it's trying to else for the new fans is 4.3 gigahertz and above sometimes even 4.8 so i mean there's the max boost and looking at the wattage itself one four oh, sorry looking at the wattage drawn by the old fans and the uh, wattage drawn by the new fans is yes i move see it is drawing consistently on the old fans, 172 watts, and on the new fans, it's 176. And with this rate that is pulling, right, it's actually the new fans are in fact better because it's hovering at 76 degrees Celsius. The max I seen is 77 degrees Celsius. Else for this, right, on the old fans itself, I noticed that when it comes to a certain certain period of time, right, yes, the temperature drop. Let me just pull all the way down. See, the temperature drop 77 degrees Celsius. It is hardly catching up, in fact. And the power drawn is lesser compared to the new fans. I believe this is throttling. And you look at the PPT that is drawn. Okay, let me just move on. See? I just move on. Look at the PPT. The old fans can't sustain. The CPU did not throttle. In fact, it's trying to pull as much as possible. That is graded over here. And the temperature is lower. And 
the clock frequency of the CPU sustain at 4.3 or maybe more. Else for the old fans, right? It's struggling to reach 4.3. So that's my point. So yeah, that's my result. I can't tell you that the one degree difference between these two fans, right? Is worth buying on the V2. But based on the other facts like the um, call frequency, I mean the uh, CPU clock and the power drawn, it tells me that it is worth getting the V2. There you have it, the results on the SL120 V2, which are the black fans over here. Before I conclude, I'd like to thank Lenny again to have provided all the SL120 V2 for me to explore and to share it with you. I hope you guys have actually enjoyed what I've shared with you and to answer a question to most of my emails and some comments stating that how do I conduct the uh, thermal test for most of my videos and how come I couldn't hit like you know my processor is supposed to hit 5 gig or maybe more I can't hit it reason being right I'm actually in Singapore which is a very hot and humid country and so to speak right earlier on I showed you the temperature of my room temperature that is based on 3 p.m. and right now it's 5.55 p.m. and look at the temperature it's still 31.4 degrees Celsius in my room without any air conditioner so this tells that you know this is my consistency I do not test all the thermal based on uh, air conditioner room or things like that it's just based on room temperature so that's the reason why in Singapore itself right not much people can heat to the uh, gigahertz that they wanted unless they are in an aircon room or maybe in a server room now having to say this right i find out something about the sl 120 v2 as compared to the okay maybe not this now some of you might ask this question in order to fit this 28 millimeter thick fans do i need to purchase longer radiator screw answer is no you can use the normal radiator screw as I can show you over here. Now, if you were to take a look at the uh, holes here, right? In fact, it's tapered in on both sides. So what makes it nice is that Lian Li have thought about this. Using the normal radiator screws, right? You can fit in. You will just go right in, see? And the thread is still coming out and you can thread to your radiator so you don't have to spend extra on getting longer screw just because that this thickness here is 28 millimeter thick so this is something which i just discovered when i was i was actually looking for long screws to fit this but when i look at the uh, screw hole itself right of all the holes it's all tapered in so very well thought of lenny thank you very much all right now this come to the end of my session and I hope you guys have actually learned something through this uh, SL120 V2 which I did and for those of you who are actually new to my channel welcome to my channel if you like my content do remember to subscribe and to click on the notification bell button till then take care goodbye see ya